So it's that time of year again when most of my projects are winding down and many of us, I, I see people constantly asking for solutions for storage and it used to be that photographers had a zillion of these lying around. We then moved on to these little guys, but the upgrade to that over the last few years for me absolutely has been dumping my things instead of onto a zillion of these into a more consolidated place that has redundancy and the availability to connect to it wherever I am. And that is something like this Synology NAS unit. And while this video is definitely gonna be helpful at all times, this whole like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that kind of thing is every year where I spend my money on buying new storage, buying SSDs, hard drives, all that kind of stuff, because all that stuff is usually on sale. So I will put links in the description to the stuff that I use and some things that I recommend, I guess, in that whole set up and most of the time that stuff's on sale so definitely check it out because it is usually one of the only times during the year where you're going to get some pretty darn good deals on storage so uh again i have no idea what that is at the moment but i will definitely update uh the description with the stuff that i find now for the sake of ethics synology did send over this new 1522 plus for the sake of this review and some more of these things that i'm going to be talking about and it's something that I've actually been looking into for a long time now to buy a second NAS storage unit where I can have one in my office here and then mirror one into my basement at my house to be able to have just another level of backup in two separate locations. So I will definitely be updating you all on my whole process and I guess all my workflow and how I manage all my files in a future video, but specifically just wanna talk about why this is such a great system and setup for me. Now. These little guys are SSDs, solid state drives, means they don't have moving parts in them. To photographers, that's sort of more akin to, I guess, even like an SD card where, you know, you don't have like physically moving, spinning disks in there. Where drives like these, at least the old ones that I have here, are actual hard drives, meaning that there is an actual spinning disk in here, which is why having these little bumpers on there was kind of such an important thing. And there are absolutely reasons, especially to have SSD drives. They are significantly faster than regular HDDs or hard drive disks and clearly more portable where this is a full terabyte of storage. You can get these up to four, eight terabytes, something like that. But the problem with that is, well, of course, this is something amazing to use on the go, your overall amount of storage that you are going to be able to have is going to be limited by the physical size as well as the cost, which is going to go up astronomically as you add more and more capacity to a super quick little SSD like this. So that's where something like a big network attached storage unit like this can come in handy because we can pull out these enormous hard drives. I mean, they're, they're huge. You wouldn't want to bring this anywhere with you, but you can pick up four, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 terabyte, big old huge drives like this for a significantly less price than if you were going to buy those all on solid state drives. And if you're someone like me, you're not going to be editing on, you know, 18 terabytes or whatever of things at a time. The most that I'm usually working with is maybe a couple terabytes. If you include all the video projects that I do now, may I mean, maybe it's four terabytes if we're just really talking about all of the data that I haven't actually edited yet. But for the most part, even one terabyte can fit all of the things that I'm actually working on at one time. So the actual working drives can be something like this and then all of your other storage and the things that you actually need to keep around for a long time can be stored on an enormous thing like that hard drive. But as you can see here, there are one, two, three, four, five different bays on this thing, which means that you can mount five different either hard drives or even SSDs onto here. So actually in these first two bays, 
just tossed a little SSD in there. So if you want to, you can actually sort of do a hybrid thing like I'm doing here with this new DS1522 Plus, where I'm gonna be separating out two different volumes one specifically being for a set of SSDs. So I'm gonna be able to get SSD speeds out of this thing with a 10 gigabit ethernet port. And also a storage section right here where I'll have multiple large, large hard drives working together to expand the storage out. And then the brilliant thing about this for me as someone who is sort of obsessed with the idea of uh, making sure that I'm not going to lose data, is that you not only get all those disks be able to work together, but you can set it up in a RAID array, meaning that let's say I have three disks in here working together. For the sake of ease of use here, let's say these are all 10 terabyte drives. What you can do is have 20 terabytes of storage through these three different drives. So as it's mapping that data across those three drives, you have the ability to have a single disk fail and not lose your stuff because it can just be automatically, I guess, repaired through that single drive. So depending on what kind of RAID settings you actually are using, it's not necessarily backing it up, but you're getting redundancy, meaning that you can have a single drive fail in here and still be able to use this whole thing, rebuild as soon as you plop another disk in. And then the other thing is how I'm going to actually use this SSD compartment is you can add two SSDs in here and then run them together in a RAID setup, which allows you to actually just combine the maximum amount of storage into one and then use the full amount of data, and then you can back up that volume to another volume, so you have the redundancy in that way. I think honestly my favorite part of all of this is just to get rid of so much of this just like extra clutter. These are SSDs, these are working drives, but you don't need more than one or two of them. And I'll do another full video going over all of my backup and workflow processes and how I use everything, but for years and years, I spent a ton of money just buying two different drives, backing them up to each other, and just working that off every single year, and then basically I would get done with them, and then put them in a cabinet, and then that was my whole backup system. And so I just have a huge amount of just old hard drives like this, and it was not cost effective. It was really, really hard if I wanted to go get a photo from something project that I did maybe two, three years ago. I'd have to go find that specifically labeled hard drive. Hope it still worked after years and years, which if you watched my first video, you saw that a bunch of my drives ended up dying as I was backing them up to my first Synology. I was very, very happy that I was able to get that data off into something that was being monitored at all times through the actual software in the Synology disk here to make sure that all of my data wasn't going to be corrupted and I was going to be able to actually have 15 years worth of work archived in a way that I could access any of it at any time. And then the other thing is that I work in a backyard office like this, but uh, obviously every once in a while I might bring something in for lunch or like the other day my kid came home sick from school and so I was working out of our living room, dining room area. And the nice thing was I was still able to edit videos and pull data off of my Synology from my office into my living room and still work and use on those files. It was going to be dependent on how fast my network connection is, so it's not gonna be as fast as if I'm plugging in like a LAN cable directly. But between that and I've had multiple times where I've been either on a shoot elsewhere or uh, at an airport, I even pulled some client files to send out to a client when I was in Iceland directly from my unit in my office. Halfway across the world was able to access every photo I've ever taken. And yes, it's going to, again, depend on your internet speeds, so it might not be as fast as directly plugging in you know, an SSD or something like that. But the idea that you have all of your files in a place that is all centralized and organized, uh, it's just one of those things where it feels like almost like a grown up adult decision. It's almost like having like a retirement account or something. I know it sounds silly, but once I actually got like a full on archive setup where I had all of my stuff just running and always 
online and archived, being monitored by the software, all that kind of stuff into a central thing. I felt so much more like a legit, like studio type of business instead of just like the random ADHD, LMNOP guy that just had like random discs everywhere. It felt like just like the right responsible thing to do to have an actual good archival system. And for me specifically with all the traveling I do and just, I love the flexibility of having it on a network attached storage versus, you know, whatever other raid type of things there are out there. So thanks so much for watching. I will be making a full workflow video soon. So if you have any questions about that specifically, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to answer it. Subscribe if you aren't already and I will see you all on the next one.